So that's the, the point that, oh, okay, so thank you very much and uh, thanks the organizer and especially George for the invitation. And the, the, the title of my talk is Twisted Differential Geometry and Dispersion Relations in Kappa Deformed Cosmology and is be, uh, based on on two papers we have with Paolo Ascari, which should be here, but it's not. And Anna Pajo is maybe on distance uh, online. Uh, and uh, the reason that I put uh, Anna names also here is that uh, I am using her transparency. So that she was, she just gave me and just I did some slight, I'm lazy guy, so sorry. Uh, so that's the plan according to is the following uh, the motivation but i think that we are me in the middle of the conference of so the uh, the motivation uh, already everybody knows uh, which are uh, uh, possible effects of uh, quantum gravity and uh, uh, and uh, its relation with uh, non commutative geometry and then uh, and the, the, the talk is split it because there were two, uh, two papers uh, and uh, two parts uh, and uh, and uh, 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 the, the one is uh, devoted to, to how to quantize geometry in the form we are using and the other one uh, is just uh, corresponds to how to apply this on curved background uh, namely in the Friedman Robertson Walker cosmology. So if somebody don't remember how Anna looks like, so you can see. And then the, 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 she pick up this slide, I think, to, to, to show the ladder of distances uh, we have to face uh, from the cosmological distances. Oops. I think it's this one, you know, very large to this Planck scale physics, which is much below this uh, uh, the, this uh, standard model uh, size and uh, and there is a hope that if this uh, tiny quantum gravity effects uh, will become multiply enlarged by cosmological distances then there is some hope to measure something finally and this is one of the mot motivation we have and then uh, this was also some in introductory uh, uh, slides which tells us when we are speaking about um, uh, non commutative geometry, we, we have to change uh, the category we are working in. So that's from the category of state and point like object, we have to switch uh, to the category of algebra. And the one way to doing this is. Uh, just to take the instead of considering Minkowski space time, we, we, we can consider the functions of uh, on the Minkowski space time, uh, the infinity function, but usually we like to have it, them to be complex valued, even if they are real like coordinate functions. And, uh, and then, uh, then we have this. Uh, 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 algebraic relation. This is the commutative algebra, and after the formation, uh, and this uh, yeah, we believe is that in the play Planck scale, uh, we just feel this deformation. Uh, perceive this, uh, we, we can uh, have some kind of non commutativity, for example. This this is the, 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 the Kapaninkovsky uh, non commutativity. And uh, another uh, example of non commutativity, uh, co which we know, comes from quantum mechanics when you have the canonical commutation relations, and uh, this produces uh, 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 measurable effect through the Heisenberg uncertainty relations. So, this is that. So the non commutative geometry, well, I think that uh, generalizes this notion of geometry, uh, taking uh, into account a non commutative algebraic structure, and it is achieved by uh, uh, deformation techniques. 
and can be helpful to provide. Uh, so this is the, this motivation slide. But for me, the motivation is uh, three weeks ago, I participated in uh, the cost meeting in Bel Belgrade organized by Maria. And then I uh, was glad to, to hear there is uh, some ongoing collaboration between uh, physicists coming from experiment, uh, astrophysicists uh, is doing observation. Uh, uh, and theoretical physicists, uh, even mathematicians, to 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 and to, to enforce uh, uh, some collaboration to 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 measure something. In. And this was uh, multi messenger. Uh, how is that title? Ah, for, yeah. For, uh, yeah, many people uh, from this conference also participate in this uh, collaboration. So that's uh, the, the basic thing is uh, 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 there, there are symmetries and there are quantum deformation and uh, to deform symmetries we uh, we have to do it in category not uh, Lie algebras but uh, Hopf algebras and Hopf algebra is uh, the object we, we know because it's of uh, Unital associative algebra, co-unital co-associative algebra, and has antipotent. It was, and uh, the, the the very well known example is uh, when we take the Lie algebra G, uh, uh, extend it to to, the, to to universal enveloping algebra, and then uh, uh, we introduce uh, probabilities on the other slide. Maybe not here. It's here. Uh, the the coproduct, which is primitive on the on generators and antipod, just changing the sign and co unit is, uh, is not zero only on group like elements. Uh, but uh, what is happening? Uh -huh, okay. So let's and uh, I think here we have <clears throat> the picture how to deform uh, algebraic stuff and uh, probably this uh, this uh, gives some intuition how we can uh, deform shape of this am amphora without changing um, the topology of underlying manifold is enough to uh, just in introduce some another metric which uh, can be uh, get from original metric by, by uh, changing the some uh, parameters in the metric and uh, so this is the, uh, the, the, the picture and um, also to perform the formation uh, quantum deformation we need some uh, parameter which is usually uh, identified with uh, Planck uh, unit but uh, here it is formal uh, parameter which uh, uh, allows to introduce the kind of uh, topology in this space and that's uh, uh, and from the other side uh, to, to control classical limits so that uh, before the formation we have to make a room uh, for this for example when we want to deform algebra uh, we need to uh, uh, to extend uh, this algebra function to the, the, the power series uh, with coefficient e, e in the algebra of function and uh, replace the product of function by so-called star product which can be delivered for example from twist and how it is uh, will be done uh, i will show later on but uh, most it's no known and uh, similarly uh, if we take Lie algebra extend it to to the, to, to the universal enveloping algebra and provide with this Hopf algebra structure, then uh, we have to extend this object to the formal power series, and then we can uh, take the twist uh, and uh, uh, and perform different uh, quantization, and there are uh, some of uh, some examples. For example, in, in during this talk, I will concentrate on. Poincare-Weil uh, algebra, which uh, 
besides of this Poincare generators have uh, dilation and some specific deformation. Uh, and then, but the, another more geometric object is um, is a uh, Lie algebra of vector fields on manifold. Here, uh, the global vector fields are on Rn. And then we can also, uh, uh, this algebra generate deform deformorphism uh, sym symmetry on the and underlying manifold and can also be deformed. Uh, so that's, uh, first of all, we have to organize uh, Hopf algebra structure and this is done in the, the in the standard way so we have the the, the uh, real algebra structure we have coproduct which looks uh, uh, primitive uh, just on the generators on the vector fields but uh, it's more complicated on polynomial expressions and again the uh, uh, the, the co-unit and uh, antipod is, is it, because the algebra morphism, homomorphism, is it, it is enough to define them on generators of the algebra. And another object we are interested in are quantum space-time, which uh, from mathematical point of view are called uh, module algebras uh, and uh, 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 and uh, the, the, the characteristic property is uh, what is called Leibniz rule that acting on the multiplication. Here it is written uh, for coordinate functions. That's, uh, in fact, those, those can be f and g functions. They satisfy this kind of Leibniz rule. And to see the Leibniz rule, we have to substitute this primitive coproduct. Then we will identify this formu formula. And, and we, we are using this uh, shortcut, uh, so-called Twiddler notation. So this is Twiddler, uh, so just. So the, the, uh, one way to quantize uh, uh, universal enveloping algebra is, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, and it is now by twist. For, for this, we have to extend uh, our enveloping algebra to this formal power series and take the element from uh, tensor square of the universal enveloping algebra. We satisfy two conditions. One is the normalization condition, and the other one is, uh, uh, is the two cosine condition, and this condition is in the has to be satisfied in the first power of this uh, tensor product. And uh, one of the advantages uh, of using uh, uh, twist is the following that uh, uh, we, we can uh, get uh, quantum tri triangular R matrix constructed from the twist, which satisfies uh, quantum young baxter equation which is equivalent to the braid relation, but additionally also satisfies this triang uh, triangularity condition. It means that when we want to uh, uh, apply this uh, to, 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 to many particle system, we can use the, uh, the statistic, which is uh, based on the permutation group uh, due to uh, this, uh, this condition. And then uh, further on, uh, we, we again use some kind of shortcut notation. But in fact, twists are much more complicated objects. They are as uh, some power series in, in the elements of, of, of the enveloping algebra. And then those elements does not need to be simple tensor, but usually there are some more complicated expressions. Uh, but uh, the twist has to be also invertible and such formal power series are uh, invertible by the uh, procedure. Uh, and then having twist, uh, we can quantize uh, our Hopf algebra and usually it is done by uh, in canonical way by uh, 
the formation of, of the coproduct leaving algebraic uh, uh, relation untouched. Uh, but uh, but uh, as we know in the quasi triangular case when um, uh, uh, when classical R matrix uh, satisfies uh, modified young box equation usually also uh, one is uh, with uh, uh, deformed algebraic uh, relation. So we, we deform both algebraic sector and co-algebraic, although the, uh, uh, so the explicit formula for co-product are in, 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 uh, in, in, in the generator satisfying deformed um, algebraic relations, but uh, the Greenfield theorem says that it can be done also in uh, uh, in uh, natural uh, Lie algebra generators. But usually the relation between the form and under form is not explicitly known uh, in the uh, infant gym of the deformation. So, and, uh, and uh, uh, due to the properties of twist, when we switch off the deformation parameter, we we can uh, uh, recover that um, undeformed case. And the co-associativity of the deformed co-product and associativity of the star multiplication is uh, ensured by this uh, two causal condition we seen before. And this is how it works uh, with star product. So when we have the algebra of function and extend it by uh, to, 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 to this formal power series, uh, uh, then we can introduce by uh, acting. But uh, the twist, how the twist acts on function is by the derivation because um, uh, <clears throat> The algebra uh, generators act on function through uh, uh, vector field realizations, and the way we see at the moment, and then using this uh, realization in, in terms of vector fields, uh, we can act uh, on functions and then uh, perform this star product multiplication. And this is uh, this becomes non commutative and uh, but still associative uh, the algebra remains to be unital uh, uh, and then uh, so this non commutativity of star product is uh, now is not uh, zero and then uh, let's uh, uh, recall uh, no uh, known example uh, one of the first uh, quantum deformation of space-time, so-called Moyal veil space-time, mentioned many times, and it was in the paper by Dr. Fredenhagen and Roberts. And the other um, uh, type of space-time, this is not an uh, example of not really algebraic, we can have uh, space-time uh, deformed with quadratic uh, relation, but uh, we prefer to, 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 to stay in this Lie algebraic version and the, 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 the one of the best known and study example is, uh, is uh, called Kappa Minkowski space time, which um, I was introducing these papers in the same year, but from different perspective, uh, because Zakrzewski just uh, used the uh, Poisson structure, but uh, uh, Majid and Truek, they, 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 they use the Kappa uh, Poincare Lie, uh, Lie algebra, the uh, deformation introduced in the paper, seminal paper by uh, Nowitzki, Lukerski, Ruek, and Tolstoy. But it turns out that uh, Kappa Minkowski space time can be obtained uh, in. In, uh, in many ways, from different twists, we will see it uh, soon. Uh, so it's not necessary to, 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 to keep as a symmetry uh, uh, canonical 
let's say, ca canonical ca papa în care au algebra. But uh, similarly to the quasi-triangular deformation, uh, we can uh, use also uh, kind of canonically deformed uh, generators. And this is the formula which comes from this paper by Paolo and Schenkel. Uh, that uh, so just, just using uh, inverse twist and the action. But the, what is the action? The action is just adjoint action, uh, which uh, in the Lie algebra case on generators is just simply the the, the commutator. But this is a more general uh, um, way of uh, writing uh, the adjoint action. And can be applied this uh, general formula in any Hopf algebra. And then again, we have this Swidler uh, type notation for the coproduct. So when we take the primitive coproduct, we, uh, we will see the, the, the adjunct, uh, the, the commutator, the ad adjoint action. And then uh, when we introduce uh, the deformed generators, we can. Uh, consider subspace, uh, which also generate uh, uh, universal enveloping algebra. Uh, but, uh, and then we can introduce the, the deformed commutator uh, by, uh, again, this, uh, the, the, the deformed commutator, but now, uh, we use the uh, de deformed antipop and uh, the deformed product, which is uh, keeping the field notation. Now is uh, coproduct is deformed by by twist. Uh, and uh, but uh, the another advantage of using. Uh, we see that we can uh, deform a lot of geometric uh, structures. And uh, first of all, we can, uh, in the canonical way, deform uh, the differential calculus, is, which is main tool in non commutative uh, differential geometry. And, uh, and this was proposed in these uh, two papers. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, and the idea is that we we leave uh, because we are talking about uh, differential forms which we want to deform uh, them. So we, we first of all we have to explain how to act by vect uh, on differential forms, and the action is uh, given by uh, lead derivative, which sometimes is uh, this uh, lead derivative if applied to forms as this form is sometimes called uh, Cartan magic formula for uh, any derivation uh, along the vector field uh, applied to the, the, to the form of arbitrary order. And then we have exterior uh, differential and contraction uh, with vector fields. And, uh, and then we don't need deform the differential, but it is enough to deform the wet product between form and the formula is again the same. But this action is now uh, given by this uh, by applying this the uh, derivation, and it's uh, in, uh, do, uh, having this done, we can reconstruct a lot of formula which are uh, known uh, from standard differential geometry. For for example. Anti-symmetry of this uh, star wedge multiplication is uh, replaced by braided. Here I am using this uh, 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 quantum R matrix. And also the other formula, they work. So as I said, the Cartan differential, exterior differential remains classical, which is uh, in some sense an advantage of this. Formal is, but we deform, uh, deform only uh, wet product. And uh, for example, this uh, is analog of the formula we, we could know. Uh, and also, the, this square, so the cohomology works as usual because this square is zero. 
but uh, for twist quantization of other geometric objects or manifolds, and even not only the objects like differential calculus, vector fields, and so on, and morphies, the, 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 the expert is uh, Paolo, and he, he wrote a lot of papers, uh, which we and, and de develop a lot of tools and techniques which were used in our paper to, uh, to the more particular case. And this case is a, a, a very uh, Poincaré algebra, which differs only by adding one non central uh, generator, the so dilation. And then we need to act on functions. We need uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, we need uh, vector field realization of uh, this Lie algebra, which is a very standard one. Uh, and uh, and uh, we we need uh, to choose some twist to deform this uh, Lie algebra. And then, uh, and then we, we choose uh, so-called Jordanian twist. Uh, the Jordanian twist is built up on two generators, uh, which satisfies very simple uh, Lie algebra re relation. So this uh, should remain as uh, what Jurek, uh, uh, during the, his morning lecture, he discussed a n three, but this is a n one, so it means uh, two dimensional uh, kappa uh, kappa Minkowski relations. But, uh, there is no kappa here because kappa can be absorbed by uh, by, by, by some generator, for example, d. So that we we study this uh, deformation in in this paper with Anna, and uh, also the other twist realization of this Kappa Minkowski sorry uh, Kappa Minkowski space time uh, relations uh, and. Uh, so this, uh, so our choice, uh, our choice was uh, motivated by, by, uh, by this uh, Kapanikovsky space-time uh, relation, which can be obtained by uh, star product, twisted star product from, uh, uh, from uh, smooth, on smooth functions on, 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 on uh, space-time uh, manifold. Then uh, uh, we ask uh, what will happen if we introduce uh, deformed uh, generators I discussed before, uh, before by uh, adjoint action of vector fields on vector fields. And then it turns out that uh, the, the formula with the, the, is the following that. Uh, uh, boost and rotation remains undeformed, dilation as well, but uh, only momenta are uh, changed. And if the momenta are changed, also the Casimir uh, is changing. But in some, some uh, in, in the way which preserve the, the, the relation which we know from, uh, from uh, undeformed case. But for this, we have to use this uh, deformed uh, commutator, uh, which was uh, mentioned before. And then, uh, so uh, the deformed Casimir has this form, and it turns out that uh, in another context, uh, this kind of deformation was studied in, in, in the paper by Maguello and Smolin uh, almost 20 years uh, ago. But from uh, another point of view, they did, they, 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 uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so I have to, sorry, speed up. 
So these are the, the twisted observers uh, which, uh, which have uh, the form computation relation which looks exactly the same as undeformed uh, commutator with uh, undeformed uh, generators. And, uh, and if you look for, uh, uh, this was already done. And then uh, <clears throat> when we uh, want to solve the uh, different way equation of first observation is that for, uh, for uh, massless particles, uh, because the, the, the multiplicative factor which differs uh, the form uh, Casimir from undeformed uh, so the solutions are exactly the same. So the, there is no dispersion rela relation. But if you look uh, for some possible physical effects, th then we have the plane wave solution. But if we promote this deformed generator to become physical observable, then uh, that spectrum uh, is deformed. And this uh, deformation of the vector uh, uh, wave vector and uh, frequency can be interpreted as a deformation of the uh, Planck energy um, uh, relation. So that we have. The, so uh, at least we, we can have some phenomenological effect uh, if we consider this uh, generator as a physical. And then how it looks. Um, how looks the um, uh, uh, differential calculus so that uh, since the twist uh, acts trivially, uh, it has two legs and the, the right leg is just uh, related with uh, momenta. So the, the, uh, so the lead derivative of this is zero. So the, 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 therefore the, 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 the many relations which are known from uh, standard differential calculus are preserved. For example, which uh, star is uh, on, on, on generators, on the uh, uh, generating uh, one forms are uh, the same. So this, the symmetry is the same and so on. But not everything is the same because multiplication from the right by forms, so for example, function now is different. So the, 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 therefore the, the bimodal structure is different than from the standard one. And then let's switch to the non commutative cosmology. Now we apply this idea to, 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 to the. Uh, we have twist, so we can twist the Friedman Robertson uh, Walker, uh, Walker geometry. So now is the background dependent. So we are in a curved space. And the first thing which we want to consider is, uh, uh, is to deform Laplacian, but the Laplacian uh, acting on the scalar field has, uh, in undeformed case, has this uh, well-known uh, form. And, but uh, to deform it, it's, it, uh, it contains uh, this star is uh, not the star product, but of course is uh, uh, is the hot star, and the hot star is uh, is just morphed from k form to n minus k form, which has uh, this form. But this form is uh, is not so simple because rising in indices. Um, uh, require the inverse uh, metric and the, when the metric is x dependent so it uh, makes some complication but uh, uh, so that uh, if you want to ask how to deform this more morphism you have to ask paulo and he he gave, uh, he gave this uh, recipe uh, so this is uh, more like we use twist uh, this is the composition of map this is the the, the undeformed uh, Hot star ethamorphism, and here the, the first leg of the twist is treated according to to coproduct. So this is the kind of similarity transformation. And uh, okay, so again the, the many formulas are uh, similar. 
for example, uh, if we apply what's the subject of our paper, uh, uh, this to, to, to any metric, we, we get a little bit complicated formula, which is valid for, for, uh, for any metric, but we want to specialize to, uh, to, to, uh, um, to Friedman, Robertson, Walker case, and to be as simple as possible, just we, we, we take as a toy model to, to dimensional, but it turns out that at the very end, the, the same result can be obtained in, 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 um, in four dimensional uh, case. So this let me switch this object. So we have to, uh, now we have the scale factor. We have flat Robertson Walker metric. Uh, and then we have sol solved this equation. So let's uh, have a look how to uh, solve uh, before the formation. So when we are in, in Robertson Walker background, so the Laplace Beltrami op operator has this form, but when we switch to the so-called conformal time, it has usual uh, plane wave solution. So therefore, in the cosmological time, uh, we, we get uh, uh, more complicated expression, but anyway, the 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 uh, the, the groove velocity, phase velocity is now uh, dependent. So, in our unit, uh, c is equal one. So here, one should uh, substitute c, uh, which is written here. Uh, so the Group velocity is factorized by the scale factor, but the physical velocity, which is scale factor times group velocity, remains the velocity of light. But this will be not longer the case in when we deform, use this deformed equation, which is very unpleasant. But anyway, this equation can be solved by similar method by uh, approximately by introducing the the the, uh, the one over kappa correction which uh, uh, in some approximation can be reduced to the uh, to the to the uh, uh, explicitly calculated and it turns out uh, so general formula for group velocity looks like this when we have modified uh, phase factor and uh, the final formula which is of course the first order in the deformation parameter kappa looks uh, exactly like this so the the the, the, the final formula for the phase velocity uh, is presented here, but of course, phase velocity, uh, uh, this is physical uh, velocity, measurable uh, velocity of phot photons. So we have to, again, multiply group velocity by the scale factor. So the, 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 uh, the, the, the velocity of photon coming from non-commutativity in, in the Robertson Walker background as a uh, result uh, in, in that approximation we use has this formula. Finally, where t is the cosmological time, but of course we, we are not able to, to measure uh, directly uh, this velocity of uh, photons, but we can, what we can measure is uh, one minute. So I will show you what we can measure is time lag, time delay between uh, high frequency uh, photons and which is explained here and uh, low uh, uh, low energy photons which are not deformed and the formula which we uh, get is uh, the following but in this formula we took, uh, took uh, into account the, the, the ana analytical expression for uh, uh, scale factor coming from uh, lambda CDM model, which is still the best uh, 
model with, uh, model which is with uh, the best agreement with the observational data, in spite of many problems discussed uh, before. So this is the, the formula which can be eventually tested by some experiments uh, when uh, uh, the time uh, delay between low and high frequency photons coming from some distance of musical uh, source. And then uh, there is no time for con conclusion. I delayed so sorry very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, you are using this notion of formal deformation parameter. Can you, so to say, explain what is the difference between the usual numerical deformation parameter and formal deformation parameter? For example, can you put in in in, in, ka, in kappa Poincaré? Can you put uh, kappa is equal Planck mass? No, you cannot because uh, we need topology to, to have convergent uh, series. If there is no topology, there is no sense to, uh, speaking about. We can have only polynomial expressions. So this is related with the. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean the convergence of infinite series, yeah. Uh, uh, but but it's not a big problem because we may think that uh, we can specialize these formal parameters to some numerical value when we make appropriate uh, uh, Hilbert spatialization. Then we have topology, and then for some value of this parameter, they 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 all uh, display. Uh, uh, series can be convergent. So this is one of the solutions. Another solution which uh, uh, is, uh, I would like to call uh, greenfeld Jimbot um, trick is uh, introducing more generators. For example, in the case of uh, Kappa Poincaré, we can replace, it was also shown by uh, one of the talks, by two generators pi and pi minus one, which hides this uh, uh, infinite, uh, which uh, can be defined like this. And this is, of course, uh, the, the minus sign. And then when we replace these generators by two generators, all the other expression for coproduct and multiplication, also one is using this trick, uh, are polynomial. So in this case, but then you have another problem if for different values of these parameters, the structures are isomorphic or not, and what is the difference? But uh, as Rita said, if you feel mathematician, you, you are okay with <laughs> undetermined variable. So that's it's no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is that, but it's necessary because this uh, introducing of this, this was um, done in uh, late 60s, 1960s by Gerstenhaber. He, he formulated general theory of the formation of algebraic structure by this topological extension to the formal power series. So this is old stuff. And Dreamfeld only used this formalist to, to, to perform his deformation. But, Yeah, there the, the are analytical functions, so there are power, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I and mean, you cannot use uh, when you have generators because you, you should realize generators as operators. When you realize generators as operators, then you can check if, if some norm, uh, so this is star algebra approach to non-commutative uh, differential geometry that you start with topological algebra. But here we don't have topological, we make artificial topology by this extension, which is 
very strong, by the way, topology. Yeah, yeah, you can look at the, in this way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you are computing the delay in arrival time yeah. of photons at different energies. Now, uh, what but do you... With some approximation, very root approximation. Yes, but for computing it, you need a precise value of kappa. Which value are, are you choosing? And, and... No, no, I'm not... Uh, so this will be the, the, the question when you want to check this, but uh, we formulate it uh this in this way you see on the the formula which was here we have uh, energy of photon and uh, so-called energy of lorentz vi violation whatever it is if this is planck scale uh, energy or uh, other is a matter of discussion but so usually we identify it if with Planck mass, oh, okay. but it's not so, uh, obligatory. That is some yes, assumption. Yes, uh, approximately three times. It's yeah, three ah, times. but uh, yeah, when we compare with on... another results, it's written. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, okay. I should maybe stress this, but uh, with the same value of, of this parameter. With the same value, because okay, uh, this formula uh, yeah, we, we did some comparison on some gamma ray bars measurements with uh, some other uh, formula which are okay, in the literature, and this was our co conclusion. Yeah. Sorry, this factor three depends on kappa or not? No, no, no. No. Be okay. Because kappa is here, so that's uh, the other people also using some kind of kappa. So we we took the same okay, it's, kappa so they, they were it using. It's divided yeah. out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you. The next speaker is Kutti Bala. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, does this work? Thank you. So uh, I would like to start by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity here to present the work that I've been doing together with my colleagues, uh, Andre Hulik and uh, Pepa Svoboda. And uh, yeah, and also for putting together this wonderful conference. So every year I'm very, very happy to be here. You don't, sorry. Should I put it forward, sir? Or should I turn it on? Uh, um, I'm saying something better. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, what I would like to talk about is uh, basically our project of how to understand or how to extend the so-called AKSD formalism, which I will introduce briefly in, in a second, in the supersymmetric setup, which I will also briefly mention in a second. And there is there is some slight obstructions in doing this. So and one way to overcome these obstructions was to use the so-called integral forms. So and we drew some inspiration from this paper of Grassi Maccaferi, where they dealt with the super Chern simon theory. And uh, although there is more aspect to this work, what I decided to, to present is the way to how to derive the 1 comma 1 supersymmetric string sigma model on the boundary of a three-dimensional topological theory following some following a similar construction by Pavel Shevra in 2016 where he did it in the, in the bosonic case. So um, it's a, I think it's a cute little calculation. So I think it might be nice to present. So, First, let me start with some brief intro. So the AKZ formalism is in a sense, a very, very nice, compact, convenient, and elegant way to construct topological field theories and also sometimes non-topological field theories. 
And uh, so here I'm focusing on a particle in the case of some particular dimensions. So that's, uh, but you can in principle take arbitrary numbers here. So the ingredients for this construction in the special case is that you choose a three dimensional manifold and you choose something that's called a DG symplectic manifold of degree two. So in more detail, this means that you, you, choose, you choose a space which is described using coordinates that, has various, that have various degree, uh, Z degree. So, it's, uh, so they are not just even and odd as you would have when dealing with supersymmetry, but they carry some Z, some ghost degree if you want. And so the coordinates commute or anti-commute depending on the parity of the degree. And apart from this space, we want to equip it with some, with some symplectic form and with some differential. So this is encoded in these two structures, which, are, which is a symplectic form, for which we also demand that we, we have chosen a, uh, a potential. This always exists in this ready setup. And we want to have a function. Uh, you can see this is some sort of Hamiltonian that satisfies the classical master equation. So here, this bracket is the, is the Poisson bracket with respect to the, to the symplectic form. And this data is supposed to have some specific degree in terms of this degree of coordinates. Okay, so this is the input. And now we can construct the model where you rough take something connected to the first one as your target and you take this as your, sorry, you take this to be the source and the second thing to be the target. So more specifically, you promote the, the coordinate, I mean, it's a very crude way to say it, but like you promote the coordinates on the target, this wise, you promote them to differential forms of arbitrary degree on this, on this source manifold M. And then the action functional looks like this. There is a reason which I'm not going into why it looks like this, but uh, it's basically you take this alpha, you plug everything in and you just treat these things, not this coordinate, but as differential forms. That's what's happening. And by, and the beauty of this construction ensures that this thing then satisfies the classical master equation, which is, which is what you want to have if you want to quantize stuff in the BV formalism, for instance. And this is kind of a nice way to, nice starting point for further investigation. But the, this talk will be entirely classical. Um, I want to recover the classical super string sigma model. Okay, so, so this, is a, this is a nice construction. So let me give you an example. So for an example, I will need a DG symplectic manifold of degree two. So I will take it to come from an ordinary Lie algebra. So if you start with a Lie algebra with an invariant pairing, then if you choose a basis, you get a bunch of structure constants and you get the coefficients of the bracket of the, of the pairing. And you can, out of this, you can construct the manifold, which is called usually G, G1, which means that this is a space where coordinates are taken to be dual to these basis with which are number of degree one. So this is the one denotes the shift in degree. And you can construct the symplectic form and the function simply out of this data. So this, this metric will lead to a, an odd symplectic form. I mean, symplectic form in, well, okay, to, to this symplectic form. And the, the structure coefficients, if you lower the index, then you can create this function. And you can, you can, if you calculate the number of, this is degree three, so that's precisely what you want to have here. And omega is degree two because it has two e's. And you can check that this satisfies the classical master equation by virtue of this being a Lie algebra. And if you, if you write down the, the, the action function also, let me remind you, it's you, you use the potential for the symplectic form and this function as your potential term. So here you have the, this is, a, this is the kinetic term coming from here and this is the, the other term. And if you look at it from distance and this is just the, uh, the churn simons theory, but it's actually in, in the BV form. So, as I said, you can you take this E or EA to be inhomogeneous differential forms, which means that since M is a three manifold, then it has a zero, one, two, and three form component. And so if you expand the whole thing, then you get the, the BV description. In particular, the, the part involving ACE will give you the classical part of the churn simon action. And this C is, a go, is, the, is the ghost corresponding to the gauge symmetry, and these are the anti-fields in the BV formalism, the super manifold. And so let me give you a little, a little slide about supermanifold. So supermanifold is similar to before. It's just a space where you have coordinates of even an odd degree. So you don't have a, a ghost, ghost degree, you don't have a Z degree, just, just even an odd. So it's in a sense, well, it's a little bit different, different flavor. So if, for instance, if you take M to be a supermanifold of dimension one slash one, then that means that it's locally, you can find an even coordinate and an odd coordinate, sigma and theta. And because we want to mimic the construction from before, then basically we want to deal with differential forms. So differential forms are now generated by d sigma and d theta. And since d is an operation which naturally shifts the degree, then this will now be odd and this will be even. Now, because this is even, it means that you can multiply it with itself arbitrary many times and it will not be zero. So you have no top forms and hence there is no natural integration of differential forms on supermanifolds. 
instead you have to go to some something else for instance you can use these integral forms so integral forms in this in this in the setup they just correspond you can imagine them being distributions on on a space which is described by these four coordinates but which are supported at, at the point where this kind of badly behaving bit is zero so if you would have more thetas then you would ask to be supported at the locus where all these d thetas vanish so formally it's just expression of this form where every time you have you need to have a delta function at d sigma d theta and uh, yeah you see the coefficients there you can have some d, d sigmas you can have some sigmas and thetas and in principle, you can also multiply it by d thetas, but then you can use these simplifying identities, the usual integration by parts for distribution. So if you have delta d theta and multiply by d theta, you get zero, etc. And these things, first of all, they naturally organize themselves into some, well, they have a natural parameter called the codimension, but that will not be terribly important. What is more important is that you can, you can multiply a differential integral form and you still get an integral form. So integral forms form a module over differential forms. And uh, finally, you can integrate them. So namely, if you, if you take a mu of this, of this potentially long expansion, then the integral of this integral form is defined to be the, the Berezin integral of this first coefficient. So here on the right-hand side, I got rid of all these d thetas and d sigmas, and I'm basically keeping the, the kind of the coefficient function and integrating it. Or more precisely, you can say that for an integral form, because of the construction, the coefficients of this, of this bit here actually transforms as a, as a density. So that's why you can integrate it. Sorry. Oh, so you can you can you can have arbitrary high derivations of the of the delta function. So so this I can I can comment about this. So this codimension actually so, so they naturally organized in a way that you have at the beginning you have you have the integral form which has the maximal amount of d sigmas and uh, and no derivatives on, on delta d theta. So this is this is kind of the, the the top form the top integral form and everything behind it you can obtain if 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 you apply on expressions of this form derivatives with respect to d sigma or d theta so if you take a derivative with respect to d theta then you get these primes on deltas and if you take a derivative with respect to d sigma then you just remove the d sigma so that's how you get this term this term is the derivative of with respect to d sigma of this guy and this is derivative with respect to d theta and you can continue and have arbitrary many infinite i mean yeah this, this doesn't stop unfortunately okay so now um putting things together. So now let, let me show you how to derive this model. So, right, so so, um, so, that, so I want to do the same construction as before. So I need a source and I need a target. So let me first tell you what is this target DG simplifying manifold. So I put it here in this teal or blue color, it's like what is the conceptual object behind it? And then I will break it down into coordinates. So, because the virtue of this thing is that you can work with things in a coordinate free way, but just for simplicity of presentation, I'm giving you the coordinates as well, but I'm telling you, well, there is a co more conceptual explanation behind it, which is, in this case, the target is so-called exact current algebra with a generalized metric, or if you wish, it can be written in this way. It's like a specific choice of a shifted tangent and a cotangent bundles of some manifold and with, with the function theta being given by some expression in omega closed state form. But anyway, in coordinates, I mean, if you know this, then that's good. But if you don't, then I, let me just tell you what this thing is in coordinates, this, this target. So first of all, you have some ordinary manifold N. <clears throat> uh, if you pick some coordinate XI on it, then uh, this induces on this on this manifold X, uh, well, four different types of coordinates of degree zero, one, two. Is everything fine with the mic? Okay. Um, right. So, um, yeah, and the indices are like this. These two are up and these two are down. And uh, and so I need a symplectic form. So I will just declare this to be Darbu coordinate. So P pairs with X and Pi pairs with Xi. And uh, the this function theta written in this coordinate looks like this. And here I am using a closed three form on, on the base manifold N. So you may ask why, why am I taking exactly these things and yeah that you can ask me that later but yeah so i'm i am saying that this this is a there is a more conceptual object behind it and it looks like this and generalized metric means that uh having a generalized metric on an exact current algebra you can always find a suitable set of coordinates or a suitable identification such that the generalized metric which is a diffeomorphism in this language is a diffeomorphism of this graded space it acts as follows so basically 
uh, yeah, so basically the parameter here is, a, is some metric. So for those of you who know about generalized metrics, you may wonder where I, well, in there, you, generalized metric usually serves to encode both, thank you, both the G and B. So here I hid the B inside this closed tree form. So this is a more general story where I, where I can have topologically non well, non-exact tree form fluxes. But anyway, it, at the end, I have a manifold uh, and the data that I used is this manifold and a metric and a tree form on it. And out of this, I create this target. And now as a source, before we had a three manifold. So now I will take a manifold of dimension three slash two, and I will take it to have a boundary. And I want that boundary to be a so-called super string world sheet. Let me tell you in a moment what that is. But on top of that, I also need to choose an integral form. So I choose a closed integral form. And I also want that if I restrict to the boundary, then I get the super string world sheet integral form. Okay, so this is the source. Now let me tell you what I mean by the superstring world sheet. So superstring world sheet in this in this language um, is is corresponds to a super manifold which has locally two even and two odd coordinates. It's basically, these bars correspond to like well non bar and bar correspond to left and right string modes, and you have some associated uh, supersymmetric derivatives, and you have a canonical integral form which looks like this. So by canonical integral form, I mean that uh, there is a more conceptual definition of what is what this means to be a superstring world sheet in terms of some distributions. So we have some involutive and non-involutive distributions on it, and you can show that out of this abstract thing, which don't require coordinates, you can always find that there is a canonical integral form. And in this, in terms of these coordinates, it looks like this. And on top of that, you also have a, an operation which distinguishes the left and right movers. So this is this operation star, which kind of flips the sign of these barred one forms. Okay, so this is this is kind of the input. Uh, it it I mean when I exp when I expanded it, it looks rather long, but like you should think of it really like the, all that it, it, there is to it is just this teal line, which is kind of nice and coordinate free. Now because I have a have a boundary, I actually have to modify the AKZ construction a little bit so because I want because I have a boundary. So I need a boundary condition, and as a, as a boundary condition, I take I I craft a boundary condition out of this generalized metric and this star. And I do it in a way that some people call it ghostless, a ghostless boundary condition and given by general arithmetic and star. Again, in terms of coordinates, this means is that, uh, that it will look like this. So, so to read this, remember that this AKZ model works in the way that you promote the target coordinates to differential forms on the source. So in this case, the target coordinates were x, xi, pi, and p. And now what I want to do, I promote them well, they can be arbitrarily high differential form, but the ghostless condition means that I, I start always with the degree of the coordinates. So there is no zero form part of psi and pi, and there is no zero and one form part of pi. This is the ghostlessness. And I denoted these lowest order coordinates by bar, which is a different bar than the one before, as I now realized. Uh, but the then I have to kind of cut these this space of these things in half in some way. So for that, I use the generalized metric and star and I impose the following condition. And again, although again, maybe looking, uh, maybe this looks a bit random, but there is a much nicer way to write, but since uh, for the lack of time, I'm giving you this complicated expression. Um, okay, and then, then the natural action functional, which is the one that was used in AKSD. And the only difference is that, that I now that all this thing on the right is a differential form. So I need to integrate it over super manifold. So I need to multiply it by this, by this chosen integral form. And, uh, but, and apart from that, the, the, the other expression is literally the same. So here, these, these three terms are a natural potential for the symplectic form. And this is the, this comes from, from this theta. Okay, so now the last thing, I will, we will just play with this and show how this reduces down to, the, to, this, to this model to the string super, super string sigma model. So what I want to do is that should notice that P is, is linear in here. So I want to clump the P's together. So I will put them here in this one term. And I will also integrate by part to merge these things together. So for that, I get a boundary term. And now this, since P enters linearly, I can integrate over it, which is kind of an old trick. Uh, so normally this would set dx to be equal to psi. But in this case, unfortunately, because we are on a super manifold, then uh, there is some sort of degeneracy present. So there is this, so irrespective of what, in, like any integral form you choose, 
for any integral form, there will always be many, infinitely many differential forms which give you zero if you multiply the two. So actually, this, this kind of integral is not really, it's some sort of degenerate thing. So it, in principle, what this thing really tells you if you integrate over P is that Xi is dx plus some function which gets zero if you multiply it by the measure, by, by, by this mu the integral form. Sorry? Well, it depends. I, well, it depends on how you look at it. So, uh, I mean, would it be fine if I would say that this is a Lagrange multiplier, or would that be better? I'm not sure what, I mean, right. No, but, but like in order to uh, kind of the general strategy for relating these things in the bar to the one on the boundary is that you, 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 you that you precisely do this. Okay. Uh, I see. Uh, anyway, right. So, yeah. So let's accept this step. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, either, either eliminating P, you know, and then by, by in terms of using the equation that it imposes or well, yeah whatever so let's let's accept this for a second and uh, um, sorry where was it? oh yeah so once once you adopt this this thing then this xi actually even though it's present it will drop out of everywhere because because uh, because basically it pairs to zero with the, with this mu so we can safely ignore it fortunately and then what is left is that you you get rid of this term of this term and you have the the you have the bulk term and you have this boundary term where you use the boundary condition. And in this way, you get the, well, an expression of this form. And the, the note is that all the other, for degree reasons, everything else that is not of the lowest degree in X actually drops out for degree reasons. So, so that's actually nice. So you only have one degree of free, well, one function at the end, which is the side, which is X bar. So if you call it Y just for simplicity, and then, and you use the explicit formula for this, for this uh, integral form from before, then this first term recovers literally the, the, the usual metric form of the one comma one sigma model. And the other thing gives you a pullback of the pre form. So this is the best domino term for the, for the superstring. And in a special case, when this H is exact, then you can actually show that this second term reduces down and joins this G together in this term. And this is the standard gate Hauder check action. Um, so yeah, well, okay, that's okay. I, I can make two comments. So one comment is that notice that this more general action with the Vesumino term it actually depends slightly on this on this integral on this integral form, which if you remember it was required to be closed. But actually, classically this theory doesn't feel that thing. So the equations of motion are well, they don't depend on this mu, and the only way this thing actually matters is in, if you do the path integral. So if, if you do like some non-perturbative effects and in terms of small deformations, you anyway pass to the boundary. So this thing is irrelevant. So the choice of the integral form matters, but only in the quantum theory. And uh, there was maybe a second comment, but I forgot what it was. So thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yes, because right. So, 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 so the thing which I kind of uh, hid under the carpet is that, I mean, here I gave you some coordinate description, but like a more more conceptually, what is happening is uh, is the, you, it's not just you have a manifold of on, on the boundary. I mean, you are asking about the boundary or about the, okay. Yes. 
any. Yes. Yes. Again, in terms of classic, in terms of the classical theory, this uh, I mean, this should be the same kind of story that happens for for the for the usual string action with the Vesumino term. But it kind of depends a little bit on the choice of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be any, any. Uh, this can be for the construction. This is any, any the super manifold dimension three slash two, which which reduces down to the to that thing. It can be topologically different in the bosonic sector. It can have different. There is, there is no. Yeah, it can be arbitrary. Sorry. Uh, I think in the classical theory it will not have because there that the classical theory well or the case where h is actually uh, exact it reduces down to the boundary which, which doesn't know about the bulk but it's only about the if you if you're interested in like non perturbative effects and like large deformations of the maps and then, then it will it will matter. Uh, I, I see. So, so yeah, in that sense, maybe this is okay. Maybe maybe the name was chosen here. Not that well. Here, I really mean it just for the boundary. I, I, in the bulk, you can have any. In the bulk, if you expand these coordinates, these these guys, they can they can also have these lower degrees. I only required it on the boundary. They they don't. And, and the ghostlessness was just that this lower triangle is zero. This basically means that differential forms they have to start with the like the lowest degree of the differential form is not zero, but is the degree of the coordinate. So if uh, more more perhaps more concretely, if if you would. If you would instead of all this, if you would consider the space where you have some two graded vector spaces, so just like topologically the most trivial situation that you can have, then this coastlessness would correspond to kind of taking maps which are strictly increasing or strictly decreasing or something like this. You only go like strictly non-decreasing or non-increasing. Uh, sorry. So yeah, that's kind of should correspond to this this thing. Uh, the, the, so, 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 so the field, if, if you break it down, in, in the, uh, so the target has these four types of coordinates, and the fields of the theory will be kind of, I replace each coordinate by a, by a set of inhomogeneous, by an inhomogeneous differential form, and the, bound, and the ghostlessness is that I, I, I require that these are not of arbitrary degree, but I want that uh, the, the psi thing, it, it's one form plus two form plus three form, but there is no zero form part. Does, does it answer your question? If this would be the if this would be the the Chern Simons, then I would require that there is no C, for instance. If I would take the ghostlessness thing here. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, those are all just differential forms. The the they they uh, the integral form only enters here as a, as a choice. So 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 the whole thing maybe I should have written it somewhere. Like the whole thing it's still true that it's like a map from the shifted tangent bundle to this to this target. That, that's still true. And ma maps like this are differential forms, not the integral forms. I I, I know that some authors also also consider the fields to be sub, like uh, integral forms or pseudo forms, but 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 here we just everything is still a differential form. It's just on top of that you you adjoin one uh, one chosen fixed. Integral form. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's direct. Okay. Excellent. Then thank you very much again. Thank you.